Gambia's ex-dictator Jama's first night in exile under dictatorial regime in E, Guinea. Gambia's former dictator Yaya Jama who went into exile on Saturday, January 21, 2017, arrived at his final destination of Malabo, Equatorial Guinea to also start life in exile under a dictatorial regime after 22 years iron fist rule of the tiny West African country. Yaya Jama's 22 years rule of the Gambia is exactly the same as his host colleague dictator President Teodoro Obionim Mbasago of Equatorial Guinea. President Teodoro Obionim Mbasago, who is the longest serving leader in Africa, the longest serving African dictator and the longest serving president in the world has ruled Africa's richest country per capita for almost 40 years amid persistent accusations of corruption, electoral fraud and even cannibalism. The tiny country that's too opaque to even include on transparency indexes has been under his rule since 1979 after ousting his uncle, Francisco Macias Nima, in an August 1979 military coup like Yaya Jama came to power in 1994. Like the government of former Gambian dictator Yaya Jame, the nature of Obiang's government is also non-democratic, since opposition is barely tolerated. Equatorial Guinea is currently a one-party state controlled by the Democratic Party of Equatorial Guinea PDGE. The Equatorial Guinea constitution provides Obiang wide powers, including the right to rule by decree. This was the same scenario Yaya Jame was ruling the Gambia for the past 22 years. He always decreed and unilaterally makes laws that best suits him and his government, the recent of which was the declaration of the Gambia as an Islamic state, the removal of the country from the International Criminal Court and the so-called state of emergency he declared after losing the elections which ended his over two-decade rule. Abuses under Obiang -in includes unlawful killings by security forces, government-sanctioned kidnappings, systematic torture of prisoners and detainees by security forces, life-threatening conditions in prisons and detention facilities, impunity, arbitrary arrest, detention, and incommunicato detention. These abuses are exactly as in Yaya Jama's 22 years rule in Gambia. During Jama's rule in the Gambia, the culture of persecution and injustice towards citizens remained pervasive, by reference to multiple examples of mistreatment of citizens and non-citizens, including credible allegations of state-directed arrests and torture. Jama's government had no respect for the fundamental human rights of Gambian citizens. Arbitrary arrests and detentions increased on daily basis, security forces continued to harass and mistreat detainees prisoners, opposition members, journalists, and civilians with impunity. The government infringed on privacy rights and restricted freedom of speech and press. Disappearances and mysterious killings was the order of the day. President Tobian is also accused of corruption and abuse of power. In accordance with what he called the basic law of Equatorial Guinea, he appointed his son Teodoro Nima Obiang Mang as the country's vice president in 2016. A son by his first wife, Constantia Akimo, the Playboy Vice President Teodoro Nima Obion has already had $71 million worth of his assets seized by the U.S., including a $30 million Malibu mansion, a $38.5 million Gulfstream jet, a Ferrari worth more than $500,000 and Michael Jackson memorabilia worth almost $2 million. He is now going on trial for corruption in France accused of buying palatial Parisian properties and exotic cars with money plundered from his native country. He has been charged with spending millions in state funds, much of it allegedly in cash, to feed an opulent lifestyle of fast cars, designer clothes, works of art and high-end real estate. Among the acquisitions at the center of the trial is a large property bought for 25 million euros currently $26 million, in 2005 on Paris's upmarket Avenue Foch, with gymnasium, Hammam steam room, hairdressing studio and a discotheque with cinema screen. Prosecutors say Obian's assets are worth around 100 million euros, $105 million, and the assets do not tally with his salary at the time of the purchases. He faces up to 10 years in prison if found guilty of corruption money laundering and embezzlement. 
Though Yahya Jama did not have a grown-up son like President Tobiang's son, but his wife Zainab referred to as the gold digger wasted lots of state resources on her personal use. Zainab Zuma Jami was married to Yahya Jam in December 1998 and they now have two children. She was born in Rabat, Morocco to Ambassador Soma, a well-respected career diplomat from the distinguished Ghanaian Soma family and Mrs. Soma who hails from Morocco. She holds a diploma in International Systems and Management. As First Lady, she ran the Foundation for Women's Socioeconomic Advancement, FAUSI, a subsidiary of the JAMA Foundation for Peace. She was also the chief patron of several worthy charities which include the Gambian chapter of the Forum for Women Educationists, FOGAM, and Operation Save a Baby, a charity devoted to providing assistance to needy newborn infants. While Gambians were dying of hunger and malnutrition, Zainab was in a flamboyant life, flying to France, Dubai, United States and other countries with huge amount of foreign cash. She was frequent of making springs of shoppings and spotted in expensive jewelry and perfume shops around the world and spending thousands of euros on beauty creams, perfumes, jewelry among other beauty makeups. In most of her shopping sprees, Zainab Jama was accompanied by her daughter Miriam Jama plus six or seven bodyguards including her protocol staff. Both Zainab and her daughter Miriam always purchased high-priced perfumes, makeups, beauty creams, colons and so forth. Like her mom, Miriam Jama too was into high spending. She grabbed so many expensive merchandises at the stops. It has always been nerve-wracking to Gambian seeing Zainab and her daughter Maryam making such expansive shopping. One even wonders whether these people are from an impoverished nation called the Gambian.